If you have an economy of AIs, does the economy of AIs actually need money? The scheme that I thought of that could be more effective is a sort of computationally mediated barter network. Barter is inefficient among humans above a certain small scale. On the other hand, if you are computers and all of your actions are recorded, you can just have a whole big data structure and you can just have a matching engine that matches the barter offers. You've seen the murmuration of starlings, right? Those birds that kind of move as one collective organism. Yeah. And I, I've seen that. I've the, made computer simulations in that in, yeah. the, in the 90s. I so think. it exhibits yeah. like, again, it looks like kind of one organism and has very complex yeah. movement. What's underpinning that are the rules that each one of these birds right, is right, running. Right. They're yeah. just like, stay two feet away from all other birds. And you know, every time one moves one direction, you imitate basically. So it's like very simple rules giving rise to extremely complex emergent behavior. Then you'd be like, okay, well, where's the intelligence in the murmuration of starlings? Like it's not, the individual birds are just running a very simple algorithm, but then somehow you get this complex kind of intelligent looking movement. Cicero said something like the more laws, the less justice. Like the more we try to complexify and control things, it's almost like squeezing something and it's sliding between your fingers, you know, like you're creating the, the opposite effect of what you want. You're trying to grab it, but it's literally squeezing between your fingers. Should we trying to? Should we be looking to just optimize for some simple, basic? I don't know what these would be: ethical rules, moral rules for AI to like keep it decentralized, or assuming a decentralized would be the right path because we don't have these philosopher kings. I mean, so far as I know, I don't think we found any across all of human history. We've had a few prophets. Someone mm -hmm. might say Marcus Aurelius was one, but you know, we all have our flaws. So you know what else it reminds me of is there's this meme that says like the self-refuting philosophy of government. You know, government exists because people left ungoverned are evil. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, but government Governments are run by people left unchecked. Mm -hmm. So it's like this weird sort of circular yeah, yeah. reasoning. Well, this was the issue I had with anarchy, which I've been very attracted to. Mm -hmm. I mean, the most anarchic places on earth are like Somalia and mm -hmm. so forth, which uh, I would rather live in China in the end. Mm -hmm. so, so far, the absence of government seems to lead to bands of armed mercenaries going around and recruiting your 10-year-old son forcefully into their mercenary pack. I mean, in the end, the state is not an excrescence like on top of human organization, right? It, it's just one among many perverse ways that people organize themselves yeah. and seems to be better than quasi-statelessness with bands of uh, armed mercenaries roaming around. Now, before we made fancy weapons, the armed mercenaries weren't as scary yeah. and not having a centralized government worked better, right? Yeah. So the, there's a complex feedback between the technologies we've developed and the social organization modes that we can have, right? Before we had modern weaponry, I mean, once you have machine guns, even cars, then you're beyond that. And mm -hmm. it, it seems like we haven't found a way to regulate things that's that's better than having a state. Yeah, well, But I then guess, AI uh, is a whole different technology, mm -hmm. and it's not clear that the modern way of organizing states can survive the advent of AI, right? Yeah, well, it doesn't seem like their revenue models are going to survive the emergence of Bitcoin either. It takes away inflation in the long run, and then it makes taxation much more difficult. So statism faces a lot of technological challenges in the 21st century. Bitcoin, however, is a small percent of the global economy. And I, I would say it's not rising as fast as AI is rising. I would say that the threat to the social order from AI will get there before the threat from Bitcoin gets I there. I guess time will tell about that. You mentioned this connection to money earlier. I wonder if if you you said you'd thought about yeah, defining I, I, money, so I'd love to ask you I the namesake had, of the I've show. I thought about defining money from a number of directions. I mean, w one of which is if you have an economy of AIs, does the economy of AIs actually need money? I mean, so suppose you have not just one mind, but you have multiple AI minds. Yeah each of which has its own resources and they want to exchange and they want to collaborate. On, How would on they things. exchange anything other than money? The scheme that I thought of that could be more effective is a sort of computationally mediated barter network, basically. So, I mean, barter is what we used to do in large part before we had money. I mean, and in the early stages, early forms of money coexisted with different mm. forms of barter. But if you have a network of, of 
humans or AIs, fundamentally, each of them can do certain things and mm -hmm. each of them would like certain other things done, right? Each of them may be willing to do certain things in exchange for having certain other things done. And barter is inefficient among humans above a certain small scale, right? Be mm -hmm. be I mean, it works on the little island where I live near Seattle in some things because there's just not that many people around, right? Yeah. Well. But it, clearly it doesn't work for a whole city or a whole mm -hmm. country. On the other hand, if you are computers and all of your actions are recorded on chain or recorded online in some verifiable form and you can then record all of your requests and all your offers everything you would like in the computational form you can just have a whole big data structure which is like i would do this in exchange for that i would do this in exchange for mm -hmm. that i would do this in, in exchange for that and you can just have a matching engine that matches the barter offers and then that's not viable for a human society mm -hmm. but among a society of ai it can all be much simpler this lets you reflect on like how would money emerge from this sort of network. So suppose you had a huge just barter network of, mm -hmm. of offers to do X in exchange for Y. You had an AI matching engine that would match actions with requests, right? I mean, that could work perfectly well. It burns some compute costs in doing all the matching, mm -hmm. but that's not that hard a problem for, com for computers. Mm -hmm. Now, how would money emerge out of that? I mean, in essence, you, you could say, well, okay, to simplify things, we will assign a single dimensional value to each action, right? Mm -hmm. What's the single dimensional value that best approximates, like, what can I get for doing this thing but it makes you reflect on wh whether money really needs to be one dimensional well, i think there's it, a it very doesn't really need to be i think there's a very well there's a key problem that that fails to address and that is the problem of uncertainty and specifically uncertainty related to the future a good definition for money actually is that it is an insurance policy on uncertainty it can be used to obtain anything that the marketplace can bear in terms of goods or services so as a market actor facing the horizon of the future, which is inherently uncertain. I can't possibly know what solutions, what goods or services I'll need in the future. Therefore, I hold at least some percentage of my assets in cash to know that no matter what happens to me, I have the highest, the widest set of options and therefore the widest ability to respond to uncertainty itself. And so I think that always creates demand for money. Even if you had a perfect, you know, informationally perfect barter matching system, those individual agents still aren't going to be able to predict what they they want in the future or what sure, others because, want in the future. I mean, just computation power could serve that role, right? Well, then you're just back to Bitcoin, basically. 